don't have to be an overpowered badass to be considered a god. Just look at Iron Man. He's as mortal as you can get in terms of physique, and yet he's the undisputed lord of the MCU. Don't believe me? Here are the top 20 times when Iron Man went god mode in the movies. Yeah, 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 nice. Ah yes, Iron Man 2 is the largely forgotten middle child of Tony Stark's trilogy films. While the movie didn't exactly set the world on fire, we did get to see some awesome flexes by the genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist, and oh boy, they sure felt ethereal. Let's take a look at the final battle against the Hammer Drones as an example. It's very clear that Tony doesn't like Hammer Industries, and he even humiliated Justin multiple times during that court scene. Is that Justin Hammer? How did Hammer get? Justin, you're on TV, focus up. Of course, that was just him showing off his sass, but over here, Bro gave us the full tutorial. This was a time when people really wanted to see the kind of stuff Iron Man was capable of, and we learned a lot after watching him and Rhodes in the final encounter. Going berserk against those hammer drones was a joy in itself, but on top of that, we also get to see that one-off laser blast which cuts through everything as if it were paper. Man, I would have loved to have seen him use that on Captain America's shield. Oh yeah, then let's not forget the massive plasma blast we got from both Stark and Rhodes when they faced off against Whiplash towards the end. It truly was a sight to behold. Power at 400% capacity. How about that? What happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. The answer to that question might be philosophical, but if we want to look at metaphors from the MCU, the closest resemblance has got to be the epic battle between Iron Man and Thor. What more could you ask for? It was perfect. Perfect. I mean, it's the God of Sass versus the God of Thunder in an all-out rumble. As much as we all love Tony, I think it's fair to say that he's no match for Thor, even with his suit. That's the son of Odin you're taking on here? There's no way you're coming out on top just because your weapons are powered by AI. However, Mr. Stark loves to go against the odds, and that's exactly what he did here as well. The fight was obviously filled with action and thrills, but the highlight was when Thor attacked Iron Man with a lightning blast, and he turned the tables. Our man gets struck by the wrath of a literal god but simply reduces it to a free charge and pulls an uno reverse that's the kind of stuff that would get you lucky with the angels now don't you just love to see iron man making full use of his intelligence If there ever was a title most suited to Tony Stark, it's gotta be God of the Suits. Bro made an entire army of Iron Man variants just for a house party protocol. Seeing the Iron Legion show up and kick off that epic sequence in that finale was just mwah. Can you even imagine how elating it must be to have such an army at your beck and call? Of course, they were just doing their job, which was to serve their master, or in this case, God. Legend has it that Igor is still holding that gantry crane steady to this day. I swear Iron Man made enough suits to start his own retail chain. Also. I do like Vision, but I miss how sassy Jarvis was in his own way. The scene was a total treat to watch, but I do have a confession here. Seeing some of those suits gets destroyed mentally hurt me as a teenager back then. No! God, please, no! No! The Iron Legion was one of the coolest things I ever saw in my younger years, and it still is. Also, side note, I loved how Tony refused to give Rhodes an Iron Man suit, even though the stakes were high. Bro really said, nope, you already have one. If you still need to understand why a mortal like Tony Stark is an S-tier character, then I'd like to remind you that Spider-Man is his literal understudy. Under 
Now, if that ain't a god mode flex, then I don't know what is. Take the ferry scene, for example. Iron Man just came in and saved the day like he was just helping an old lady cross the street. They did a really good job of showing the contrast between how experienced Tony is and how much of a kid Spider-Man still is. That's not a hug. I'm just grabbing the door for you. We're not, we're not there yet. I mean, while Stark is briskly welding the boat back together, he seems completely calm and at ease, whereas Peter Parker is still panicking over the one mistake he made a couple of scenes ago. Bro doesn't even need the Iron Legion for this. Those little gizmos were more than enough to get the job done. Not only does this show us the level of efficiency Tony's operating at, the scene also gives us an idea about his general sense of awareness. Bro could have easily just ignored Spidey, but he made sure to keep an eye on him, and that call eventually saved an entire ferry filled with people. It's no hate to Peter, but Iron Man averted a total disaster here with his last minute save. I did listen, kid. Who do you think called the FBI, huh? If you've studied enough Greek lore and mythology, you must have come across the fact that gods were known for destroying cities and stuff over the most trivial issues. Well, this scene isn't exactly a trivial matter, but the catastrophic scale of destruction was pretty much the same. It takes a special kind of skill to be able to blow up an entire country, even if it's a fictional one. However, Iron Man and Thor knew this was the only way to save the world, so they affected a one-two combo that shocked and amazed their audiences all over the globe. Sure, it's Thor who performs the final blow, but that wouldn't have been possible if Iron Man didn't unleash that laser blast upon the country's core. That particular moment almost felt angelic, although from a tragic point of view. Also, can we appreciate Tony's plotting skills while avoiding all of that falling debris? That ain't an easy task, but our man does it with the utmost ease. Where do you even learn to fly a human-sized suit like that? Bro should just start his own aviation company. <laughs> I guess maybe he'll just buy one. Money was never an issue for Mr. Stark now, was it? We all love to praise Hulk for smashing a giant leviathan with a single punch. Sure, that's impressive if you're a fan of One Punch Man, but there's another scene from The Avengers that's even more noteworthy if you consider the fact that Tony Stark did it. He might be rich, but he doesn't have the benefit of an angry green giant living inside him now, does he? Even then, for Iron Man to save the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier with his turbo jets was a truly astounding feat. To be honest, I found it a bit hilarious because of the part where he screams, help, when he's getting crushed by the fan, but the God of Sass quickly recovers and launches an effort that almost felt like holy intervention. It's kind of ironic that Tony was doing this while Captain America was busy shooting down the enemy with an assault rifle. I guess morals really are flexible when it's a life and death situation. Actually, now that I think about it, this scene was right after Steve Rogers mocked Tony for not being the one to make a sacrifice play. Wow, that's one way to teach the doubters a lesson. Iron Man 2 makes a return to this list and with a pretty badass entry too. There are so many things about this scene that just make me jealous. For starters, it's happening in Monaco. Then there's the fact that Elon Musk is there. Mr. Musk. How are you? Congratulations on the promotion. Thank you very much. It's a freaking racetrack battle. Imagine paying for a Formula One ticket, but you end up watching Iron Man fight. That's the best deal ever. I just have to shout out the suit up scene because the sequence is as godly as it gets. Kudos to the editor and the cinematographer for pulling off something that's visually stunning and also gives off those Giga Chad vibes. Of course, it was also very nice of Whiplash to just stand there and let Iron Man complete his transformation, but don't mistake this for lazy writing. It was already established that he didn't like Tony Stark and thought of him as a thief who stole his dad's idea. So Whiplash intentionally wanted to defeat the Iron Man tech just to prove that he's better. However, what he failed to consider was the fact that Tony's suit would absorb his whip's impact and smack him down with just one punch. I love how the writers thought of Tony's evolution as an innovator, an inventor. They didn't just go, oh, he can do nanotech right off the bat. Even with the Avengers movies, his suits were slowly but surely progressing. Okay, 
door. Hit me. Don't you just love it when Tony learns from his experiences and mistakes? I already covered his first battle with Thor in the earlier entry, and this scene shows how well Iron Man adapted to the idea of dealing with thunder blasts. He realized that his suit could take lightning charges and increases its own output, so he went a step further and added a whole power input section into the nano suit. Seeing him come through with the combo was an epic moment. The suit looks so good with those cannons, and, and watching Thor use both Mjolnir and Stormbreaker to charge up Iron Man was the most perfect visual you could see in a battle. I would have genuinely put this in my top 5 if the laser blast actually worked and destroyed that weirdly overpowered sword that Thanos was using. Like, come on, that was such an awesome moment. Why ruin it by having Thanos block the blast with a weird spinning trick? If Wanda could destroy it with her magic, there's no way that that combo strike wouldn't have been able to do the same thing. Alright, I'm not here to complain, just wanted to let out a little rant. <laughs> It's no secret that the MCU has Iron Man to thank for all of those billions of dollars at the box office. He's undoubtedly the cash god for Marvel and Disney, so it was only a matter of time before I brought out his OG film all the way from 2008. That was 15 years ago, believe it or not. The Gulmira fight is without a doubt one of the coolest scenes in all of Marvel. It's got just the right balance of reality, swordsmanship and wonder. Iron Man totally dominates the fight, but he doesn't brainlessly attack the opponent. There's a certain strategy at play here, and that's exactly why he comes off looking so good from it. I don't need to tell you how much I love the missile attack on the tank. I've done it time and time again in my previous videos. It is a small missile, but it does leave a big impact, doesn't it? And what about that god mode walk he does after the explosion? It's just way too good, especially if you compare it with newer films. I also love how the suit's plasma blasters take their time to charge and fire. The tech takes moments to engage because the suit is mechanical and heavy. Such a masterpiece. Steve Rogers was made to eat his words quite a few times in the first Avengers film, and this scene in particular was kind of like a metaphorical slap to his face. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Or but, whatever works for your imagination. The Battle of New York required our heroes to put in their best efforts, but no one pushed themselves harder than Iron Man because he's the one who ended the fiasco with his selflessness. It was already cool enough that he took down multiple Chitauri monsters, but then he went ahead and nuked the mothership with an explosive home delivery. This is, once again, an example that proves you don't need to have superpowers to be a god. That kind of title is earned when you display abilities like the willingness to sacrifice yourself for the greater good. It's exactly what we see here, and I was so impressed to see Tony not even hesitating for one second while he was taking that missile into another dimension. He knew exactly what he was doing, and he went ahead with it anyway. Now that's a person worthy of my worship. point of being a god is the ability to create, and I don't mean that in some philosophical artsy way. Tony Stark kind of did something similar in Iron Man 2, which was pretty much an enlightening experience. What's even more badass about it was the fact that he did this in order to make sure that he'd continue to live. Bro literally refused to die, so he went ahead and found a new element. If you're confused as to what this element actually is, it's not vibranium. Howard Stark figured out how to reproduce the energy signature given off by the Tesseract by replicating the structure of its base element. In other words, he replicated the power of the Space Stone to a certain extent. But yeah, Tony's still impressed one and all with his insane discovery, or as he rightly put it, rediscovery. Thanos may like to believe that he's also cursed with knowledge, but that's cute compared to Tony's unlimited intelligence. The finale to the scene was such an epic visual. It truly felt as if he had the power of the sun in the palm of his hands. Sorry Doc Ock, Iron Man did it first. The proposed element should serve as a viable replacement for...
Many people say that 2012's The Avengers was just Iron Man 3 with extra actors. Now, I'm not going to argue with that logic because, let's be real, he totally owned this movie. Whether it was his sass, intelligence or tactical battle skills, the man never failed to impress. Let's take the little showdown he had against Loki right before the Battle of New York truly began. Iron Man gives us some humour with the We Have a Hulk line. I have an army. We have a Hulk. But more importantly, the speech he gave about avenging the Earth had sent chills down my spine the first time I watched it. Here's a man who's completely powerless against the god of mischief, but he still owns him without his signature weapon. Of course, the suit-up scene after he gets thrown out of the window is what lands it into my top 10, but you get the point, don't you? As much as I like Tony's nanotech in the later movies, there's just something so satisfying in seeing him suit up in his older appearances. Watching all those parts come together is a separate joy by itself. He killed my mom. <laughs> I just spoke about the Avengers being an Iron Man sequel, but Captain America's Civil War was probably a bigger flex. I mean, bro literally hijacked the movie despite it having Steve Rogers' name all over it. It could have been a lot worse for him too. The writers of that final battle could have simply used logic. The fight with Iron Man on one side and the super soldier lover boys on the other side was an epic sequence filled with thrills. The ending aside, Iron Man showed his opponents their place despite being outnumbered and unfairly damaged. Also, I totally loved the part where Tony Stark was ready to blow up Bucky with a deadly missile. It actually showed how angry he was, and if the producers didn't want Captain America to win, we probably would have seen a lot more of Iron Man's lethal moves. The part where he straight up annihilates Bucky's arm with his chest blast was a massive moment that still feels surreal. It truly felt as if the super soldiers were facing the wrath of a god, you know? In our darkest times, we usually say the words, Oh God, please help me. Well, in the MCU, it's Iron Man who comes to the rescue, at least in the case of planes being hijacked by extremist soldiers. Defeating that bold weirdo was enough of a headache already, but then our man saves each and every passenger with a formation that even my physics teacher wouldn't have been able to think of. It's such a cool sequence, and it's long enough for us to realize just how strategic it really is. He didn't even bother with the advice Jarvis was giving him, and that makes Iron Man our true lord and savior. Bro even looked back to make sure the crew members could swim. Let's not forget that Tony just pulled off a successful plane rescue while not even being at the scene. He's just controlling his armor while on a boat as if he's played a video game. What a legend. It would have actually been a perfect 10 out of 10 if it weren't for that final collision. But hey, kudos to the director for having us fooled during the entirety of the rescue scene. I do miss the old suits, but I can't deny the legendary status of the nanotech variant. Carl Obsidian looks like a big meanie if you ask me. He might have been able to match the Hulk's power levels, although that's something that we're never going to know. So when Tony transformed in such godly fashion, it was but obvious that we were going to lose our collective minds. I liked how they deceived us in the trailers by simply showing this scene without the CGI. Of course, the plasma cannon blast that follows was a nice little cherry on top of the cake. My favourite part about this is that Tony's sunglasses are nanotech as well, so they fade into his hand when he takes them off. This means he could have just had them merge into the helmet, but no. He specifically wanted to do the dramatic taking off the sunglasses bit as he was walking, like a badass. Honestly speaking, I would have done the same thing. Giga Chads think alike, don't they? It's hard for everyone to agree on the same thing, but in the case of the Hulk, I'm pretty sure nobody's going to challenge his strength. That includes our very own Iron Man, because he teamed up with the angry green giant's humane half and created a suit so deadly that it could humble the freaking Hulk. It's kind of ironic that it's named Veronica. I'm calling it Veronica. 
but I guess the toughest of men fall for the sweetest of women. Nothing sweet about the Hulkbuster though, that thing is an absolute unit and watching it thrash Bruce Banner's violent alter ego was a treat to the eyes. That punch still echoes in my mind whenever I think about it. This is the kind of stuff you pay your hard earned money to consume and enjoy you know. Of course it did take a while for Tony Stark to emerge victorious but if he can defeat the same being that makes gods look puny, I think it's safe to say he deserves a religious group of his own. The concept of time travel is so convoluted and complex that even the MCU hasn't figured it out yet and they based the whole phase on it. Tony Stark though, he's a different level of genius. The moment he figures out time travel and how they can use it to undo the snap was a pure eureka moment. Sure, maybe it was losing Peter Parker that pushed him beyond his limits, but the fact remains that Tony discovered and understood time travel all by himself. That alone is enough to establish him as the smartest man in the universe. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that Reed Richards doesn't deserve that title anymore. Not after that ridiculous error he committed against one day. Eh? Matt, this scene hits like a ton of bricks after knowing the outcome, especially after the line, We got lucky, a lot of people didn't. I really miss this kind of writing in the newer movies. My turn. All of this started with the Mach 1, so it's only fair that I include it in one of these entries. This ain't even a case of personal bias, because the scene is genuinely awesome. Watching Tony Stark during his first test run of the Iron Man suit was a feeling only the OG Marvel fans can truly cherish. I like how he goes from never having killed someone personally to straight up burning fools alive. I suppose the moral of the story is that if something takes that many bullets and doesn't fall over, you do not stop shooting. Bro gave a whole new meaning to the term firearms. What more could you even ask for? Here's a man who was down and out for the count, but soldiered on and emerged victorious, not just in this battle, also as the MVP of the MCU. You can't replicate that kind of energy on TikTok now, can you? Thanos is the big daddy of all MCU villains and it's not up for debate. I don't care how many kangs you throw at me, all right? His undeniable strength and catastrophic vision made him surpass the might of gods like Loki and a pre-Stormbreaker Thor. So when Iron Man made him bleed, it was a shocker to everyone watching. It was obvious that Thanos was way more powerful than Iron Man, but that didn't stop him one bit. The fact that Tony was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thanos for a full minute and a half is honestly impressive. Bro even managed to create a shield that could repel a blast from the freaking Power Stone. No wonder Thanos had respect for him. Remember when Steve Rogers said, big man in a suit of armor, take that away and what are you? Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. Well, he's still freaking Iron Man. He was ready to die for humanity right there, right now, without any regrets. Now that's what you call a real hero. You want to know why I keep calling Iron Man a god? Well, it's because the man instantly sacrificed his life to save the universe and used every ounce of his soul to make sure he followed through. The Iron Snap was such a legendary moment that it deserves its own place in cinema's Hall of Fame. This was a culmination of the journey that began from his own solo film in 2008 and manifested over a decade of character growth and development into the most memorable moment from the entire MCU franchise. Robert Downey Jr. is a great actor and he might not ever find a role like Iron Man again, but he doesn't need to. That's because he's the only face we will ever recognize as Tony Stark. It's because he's the one who held this universe together. It's because he is Iron Man. I love you 3000. Now I'm gonna go cry in a corner. Hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the TV region and here's another video that I know you're gonna enjoy.